Welcome to another episode of How to Shoot Better. Now before we actually get into shooting drills and showing you guys kind of how to actually shoot better, we first have to make sure our rifle and our pistol are accurately zeroed. And what that means is that my sights, whether I'm using a red dot optic or a set of iron sights, when I put those on a target and I press the trigger, provided I'm pressing the trigger adequately, the bullet is actually gonna go to where my sights are lined up on the target or somewhere above and below, but we'll get there. Now, like I talked about in the first episode, I encourage people to start with a red dot optic for both rifle and handgun. And for most rifles being sold on the market nowadays, they don't come with a set of iron sights. It's just a flat top Picatinny. You're gonna have to put some sort of sight on there. I recommend you start with a red dot. With a handgun, a lot of handguns have an optic plate out there. You can immediately throw a red dot on there. I highly recommend that. You'll understand a little bit better of what's going on. You'll be able to discern the target, discern your trigger press, call your shots easier. And then later on, you can transition to using iron sights, or you probably have another handgun with irons you can train with at the same time. So for the sake of this video, we're gonna be discussing how to zero and the methodology behind zeroing red dot optics. We're not gonna be discussing iron sights. For most handguns out there, the irons are going to be zeroed from the factory at 25 meters. So they're pretty close to begin with and the sights are really close to the bore. Most rifles out there with irons, if they do come with a set of iron sights, are somewhat zeroed-ish, kind of. At least inside of 50 meters, you could still get training in. But we're gonna be discussing red dot optics and what you need to worry about with those. So the first thing to understand about zeroing your optic on your rifle is that it sits quite a bit higher than the bore itself. So basically when you shoot a rifle, your bullet is gonna come flying out the bore. In this case, on this rifle, it's probably like 2,600 feet per second. It's gonna travel in a somewhat flat line and then after about 100 meters, it's going to start to drop. a Little bit at first and then as it pushes out to 500 meters or so, it are, it's really gonna start to drop off. My optic on the other hand, whether it's a red dot, a holographic, or even a set of irons, a magnified optic or whatever, is giving me a sight line that is in a perfectly straight line. My optic doesn't arc like the bullet trajectory arcs when I actually fire around. What this means is my perfectly straight line for my optic needs to aim downwards to intersect with the trajectory of my bullet coming out of the rifle. And this is where you have to specify a distance to zero your rifle. Do you want the optic to intersect with your trajectory at 50 yards, 100 yards? I've even talked to people who've wanted to do 10 yards so up close when they put their optic on someone inside their house, if it's a home defense scenario, they don't have to worry about any sort of holds and they can shoot and where the optic is sitting, the bolt is gonna go there at 10 yards. Now the problem with that is, if I have that first intersection at 10 yards for my sight line, because I'm really pushing my sight to aim downwards into my trajectory, what's gonna happen after that? Well, my sight line is going to actually continue underneath the trajectory of my round and the round is going to be sailing above where I'm actually aiming. At some point, the round is gonna come back down and intersect with my sight line. And with a 10 yard zero, it's probably gonna be something like 500 yards where the round actually comes back down and meets up. Which is why you have zeros that you'll find out there that's a 50 200. What that means is if I zero at 50 yards with my 5.56, with my 16 inch rifle, the round is gonna pass over that and it's gonna meet up again at 200. What this means is you're gonna have a hold under if you shoot at 100 yards, which is a little hard for some people to do, which is why I recommend if you are just starting out with a rifle, you zero for 100. So my sight line is going to intersect with the trajectory at 100 yards. This means the, the trajectory of the round is just gonna simply drop off after that. So I only ever have to hold above the target. I never have to hold under. I don't have to worry about a second intersection for my zero. It's just going to be holding above the target at 200, 300, 400, and even up close as well, but we'll get to that. Now I normally use a 50, 200 meter zero on most of my rifles, but for this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to zero at 100 because I do think it's a great starting point for you guys, but you're probably thinking, I don't have 100 yards at my indoor range. I don't have 100 yards at my outdoor range where I can rent a bay. This is where we're gonna use a special target that allows us to zero at 25 yards that will give us a rough but very close 100 yard zero. So once you do go somewhere where you can shoot a little bit further, your rifle's gonna be pretty dang close. 
Now, ultimately, when you're zeroing your rifle, it doesn't matter what kind of target you're shooting it into, provided you have a consistent aiming point that you shoot into while you move your various groups into a specific location, which should be either right on the dot that you are aiming at or right below it. So one of the most important things that we're looking for is making sure our windage, our left and our right, are centered up with where we're aiming and we're aiming at the same spot every time. Now in this case, this target uh, that we have on our website, and there's a lot of other ones like this, uh, just makes it a lot simpler when it comes to zeroing. We have these little graph boxes, which each represent half an MOA. So we'll talk about MOA here in a minute. Um, but when I actually shoot into this target and I have my little group, I can actually count off how many clicks I'm gonna have to make to my iron sights or to my optic to move my point of impact, so all my three rounds, over into my desired box. So for this target, uh, I'm gonna be shooting this at 25 yards. I have an aiming box right here. It says 25 yard uh, point of aim and my point of impact. But instead of my bullets landing in this box, where you would think you would want the bullets to land in the same box that you were aiming for, I actually want my impact zone, my rounds, to be impacting below where I'm aiming. This is going to allow the, that trajectory to then line up at a further distance. In this case, it's been calculated. If I put my impacts here in the bottom box while aiming at this top box, so the small one, I'm gonna have it line up at 100 yards. If I'm doing a 50 200 meter zero, which is what I do on most of my guns, I want my impact zone to be here in the 50 yard box. And then it's gonna line up at the 50 when I go back to 50 to shoot. Now, ultimately, when you are using these smaller boxes and you're doing an, off an offset zero is what it's called, understand that it's not going to give you a perfect zero. If you have a really good group here at 25, uh, here in the 100 meter box, you're not necessarily, necessarily gonna see that it's actually slightly to the left until you go back to 100, shoot your confirmation group, and then see, oh wow, it's actually like way over here. It's not perfectly lined up. But this will get you close enough that you can start training, you can start doing stuff inside your indoor range. Um, you know, if you're in a small like pistol bay, you'll be, you'll be just fine, you'll be okay. Just understand that optimally, you can actually confirm at the furthest distance. So if you have a 50, 200 meters zero, you're actually confirming at 200. Or if you have a 36, 300, you're actually confirming at 300. Or with the 100, you're actually confirming at 100. So now we're gonna go back to 25. I'm gonna be putting my EOTech reticle center of this box right here. And there's, it's very nicely contrasted, so it's easy to see. And I'm gonna be moving my impact zone into the 100 yard box so that I can have a 100 yard zero. Now, if you have a laser range finder and you can range 25, that's awesome. If you already have that lined up on the range, that's cool too. But if you have to just pace it off, it'll get you close enough. So I'm just gonna pace it. So this is 25. I'm gonna have my muzzle there on the 25 yard mark. To ensure the most accurate zero possible, we want to be as stable as possible. If you have a bench rest and you're seated, that's pretty good. Being prone to the ground is going to be best. So in this case, I'm just gonna get down with the rifle. I'm here at 25, got my mark, muzzles on the mark for 25 yards. We're going to be monopotting off of the magazine of the rifle. With most, if not all, standard Air 15s, you can monopod off the magazine. It's not gonna cause feeding issues. There are some weird guns out there that, yes, that you'll have issues if you monopod off the mag, and you'll just have to learn what those are for those unique weapons out there. We are gonna keep the stock firmly in our shoulder. Again, trying to be as stable as possible. My support hand is going to grab the rail where I normally would. I'm not gonna be grabbing the mag well because that is not gonna be stable for the end of the muzzle. So I'm gonna be about halfway through, elbows firmly planted, legs spread far apart and flat to the ground, trying to have my body behind the rifle as much as possible. Again, I'm just trying to minimize any variable that it's gonna cause me to fire an ineffective shot and give me a bad data downrange to inform how many clicks and what I need to do to get a good zero. The other thing to think about when you have mounted your optic, ensure you've mounted it properly. I can't tell you how many people I've seen who've mounted it loosely or they didn't clamp it down. They go to shoot and they're just chasing their groups all over the place, having no idea what's going on. So read the manufacturer instructions on what torque spec, 
how to set it up, how tight the mount needs to be. I like to run my optics all the way forward in the upper receiver, but not bridging the rail, and I try to keep them as tight as possible. Most of these optics will return to zero if you do remove them. With that said, if you've spray painted the upper receiver, as you take optics on and off, paint will get chipped away, it'll be a little bit different, and when you remount the optic, it's probably not gonna be perfectly zeroed. I always shoot a confirmation group after putting an optic back on, even if it was zeroed before. And usually it's pretty close, but not always perfectly. So once I'm set, I'm gonna be aiming at that little bitty box. I'm gonna dim my optic as much as possible. I don't want it blowing out my target area, but I want it just bright enough that I can see it. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna fire three rounds. Now we can go down and check them, see what's going on. All right, so we've got our group shot high and right. So you might think, hey, well that's, that's in line with this one right here. Well, we need to bring it down, otherwise when I go to 100 to shoot my confirmation group, this is actually gonna be way up here because it's gonna magnify with distance um, if I have an issue right here at 25. So I need to bring this group of three rounds down into this box right here. And the nice thing about having a target like this is I can use these little boxes to measure out exactly how many clicks I need to make because every optic out there, or at least they should, has an MOA increment or an MOA measurement of how many, what MOA is being affected with how many clicks. So on this EOTech, it is 0.5 MOA for every click. So that means if I wanna move my group an inch at 100 meters, I'm going to do two clicks in one direction, either right, left, or high and low. But since we're shooting at 25, I have to obviously multiply that math, and I'm going to do much more clicks than just a couple clicks as if I were at 100. So in this case, on our target, I have down here, it says uh, the 25-yard the conversion uh, for shooting in EOTech is gonna be for every box, I'm gonna to have to do two clicks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in between my group of three, I'm gonna average to the center, and I'm just gonna count my way down to this box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine down, but I'm going to double it because I'm at 25, not at 50. So now I'm gonna come down 20, is what it looks like. So it's 10 times two, because I'm shooting at 25. So that's 20 down. And the nice thing about these targets is, for those of you that might maybe you know, are starting out, it shows in which quadrant, which direction you need to go. So in this case, I need to twist to the left, and I need to twist down. So now left, I need to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's gonna be 14 left. So now I've, Done my 14 left, 20 down. That should get me here. We will. So I've made my adjustments. We should be pretty close to this box, but now we're gonna go back, shoot another three, and then make another adjustment from there. All right, so my second group is close, but like I said, gotta shoot to find out. I've got two and one right here, so again, I'm gonna split the difference for the middle. I need to come up one, two, three, times two, so I need to come up six. And it's hard to say if I'm like more to the left or more to the right. I'm gonna go ahead and give me one click to the right, though to the left because I just feel like that's the right thing to do. And it could be completely wrong. I'm gonna go one click to the left. This next group should get me right here. And the funny thing is, when you go to zero, 
You don't have to have a target like this. You don't have to know exactly what your clicks are. You can just chase groups all day. Be like, I'm just gonna do eight, and then it's over here, then I'm gonna do four, and you bring it over. Like, you can do that. The purpose of a target like this is to give you a frame of reference for measurement that lines up and correlates to manufacturers. It correlates with MOA measurement, which is a you know, one inch you know, area of measurement at 100 yards so that you can save money and hopefully get your rifle zeroed within like three groups. Um, I've shot on this target and sometimes done it in two. I got my first group and then my second group's here and then I go straight to confirmation and I'm done. So I'm hoping this next group will be all here and we can move on from there. All right, so this is better, but it's so hard to kind of know what's going on because I've got one off here to the left. I did click once to the left. That might have been it, but I've got two in the box now. They're favoring the bottom. I want to be a little higher. So I'm going to go ahead and click one up, just one. And I'm going to go back one right, and we're going to shoot another three. Now, another thing to remember is based on your ability to shoot, how new you are, how much you've been shooting, you may not be getting groups as good as this. You may also get groups better. There's some days I've come out to zero a gun and I'm just shooting like crap. So at some point, some of your grouping and how well you're gonna zero a gun is gonna come down to your ability to shoot a rifle. So if you are just starting out, don't chase groups. Like get it close and then move on and start training. Over time, you will get better at zeroing a rifle. You will get better at grouping rifles. At the very beginning, if you're shooting a six pound mil spec trigger and you've never really shot a rifle before and you're going to zero, you're probably gonna have larger groups and that's okay. That's okay. You do not have to chase a perfect, perfect little three rounds all together. But this is also why we're shooting three rounds. Uh, a single round wouldn't give us enough data. Two rounds is definitely enough data. Three rounds is what I do to group. And then when I go back to shoot confirmations, I do a little bit more than that, but we'll get to that here in a minute. So I did one up, one right. We're gonna shoot again. Hopefully all three will be center, but again, based on how, how the day is, how much ca caffeine I've had, how solid I am in my position, how good I press the trigger, how good I align my optic here, will affect my overall zeroing process. All right, so my latest group is pretty solid. All three in the box. However, they are slightly favoring the right side. But if I try to click it to the left, it may favor the left side. And this is where confirming at 100 or 200 or whatever your max distance is, where the, your sight line is converging with the trajectory of your bullet, is actually gonna tell us the full story. When I go back and confirm at 100 into this box right here, my group's probably, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, going to give a little uh, prediction, it's going to be favoring on the right side. And that's where I will add a few more clicks in there to actually center it up in the box. But again, with what I have right here, if I'm just training inside a pistol bay, I'm shooting at my indoor range or whatever, uh, this is good enough. I can start training. I can start getting good hits. I've gotten my windage good enough that I can start work. Uh, my elevation, if I'm not shooting really far, isn't going to be a big issue. So I'm good to go with this zero right here to start training. But I am going to go back and confirm at 100 to kind of show you guys uh, what's happening. Maybe this will line up in the center. It usually doesn't. It's usually off a little bit. And then you have to finesse it a little bit more. So now let's go back to 100. Blast into here and see what it looks like. Now when I'm shooting a red dot at 100, I have a hard time seeing this. My right eye is not as good as my left eye. So I color it in just to see a little bit better, um, but that does mean my aiming point is not quite as refined. Um, so I have my five round group right here. Um, it's actually different than I thought it would be. I predicted it would be off here to the right due to it looking a little right over here. And I'm actually trending to the left. So this is a perfect example of you shoot your zero up close and you think it's good to go. And then you go back and realize it's really not. However, it is close. Like if I, were, if I were shooting a person from 100, I would be fine. 
Uh, this is a shot that I pulled uh, that I absolutely felt it is not representative of my current group and that is one reason I like to shoot five when I go back a little bit further, especially if I'm walking all the way back down there and back. So I'm mainly going to go off of these four to make adjustments and I'm going to average out to the center and it does look like I need to come up a little bit. Um, but remember, this EOTech is every click is half an M away. I'm now shooting at 100 yards, which means if I want to move up one inch, I need to click it twice. So if I want to go up an inch and a half-ish, I want to go up three clicks. So I'm not doing as many clicks as I was, you know, when I was up close because it's just math. I'm actually going to be doing quite a bit less because it's going to move the group a lot more because I'm further away. So I'm going to go up three. Yeah. And we're going to go right one. It'll be a half inch. And then we'll shoot it again. So this last group felt a whole lot better. Uh, this was one that I called my dot kind of floated up a little bit right as I fired. Uh, but it is pretty close to the other ones. So my windage is good. I'm not going to play with windage anymore. It's solid. Um, just averaging out and seeing where the majority of the group is. It's definitely in line with the target. I like that. Um, I do need to come down. I originally went up three, jumped to here. So I need to either come down one or two. And then optimally, I would shoot another group and double check and ch triple check. Um, but I'm going to move on and start talking about pistol zero because you guys see ultimately kind of what's going on. You can see the difference in how, how different the zero is once you go to confirm at distance, even though you shot up close. Uh, back when I first started shooting a lot, I only zeroed at 25 and called it good enough. And I didn't really run into any problems until I started shooting at distance. And that's when I learned, oh, I actually need to confirm at 50. I actually need to confirm at 100. I can't just shoot an offset target like this and hope it lines up because it's never perfect and you're going to make slight adjustments once you once you go out to distance. So I'm not going to mess with windage. I'm going to come down. I'm just going to come down one. One click and that should get me right up in here. That is solid. It's good enough. Again, I'm not going to chase my group too much. Um, I'd probably shoot this a couple more times and then be happy. But for now, this is good to go and it's ready for training. So now let's talk about pistol and what you need to do to zero a pistol optic. So like I mentioned before, if you have a pistol with iron sights, the iron sights are sitting so low to the bore that typically it's already pretty zeroed from the factory and they're supposed to be zeroed at 25. And so when you start shooting, they should be good to go. Your windage might be off a little bit. You may notice that, but if your rear sight is centered up with your slide, it should be good. However, when you start mounting a red dot optic, you'll see that it starts sitting a little bit higher up. How it's mounted, it could be twisted a little bit in the mount off to one side or the other, just slightly. And so you are gonna have to confirm zero once you mount a pistol optic to your slide, whether it's a more expensive high-end optic or whether it's a cheaper one that you know comes from another country, you're still gonna wanna shoot a confirmation group and really see what's going on. Sometimes it's pretty centered up and you're good to go. Other times it'll be way over here and you've gotta fix that. Now the difficult part about zeroing a handgun with a red dot is if you are new to shooting a handgun, your trigger press is not gonna be great. You are not gonna be shooting super accurate groups right out of the box, just good to go. So your zeroing process is not necessarily gonna be really refined. Shooting a rifle is much easier. You've got more points of contact. Pretty much anybody can zero a rifle at 25 yards. It's really not that hard. Shooting a handgun and zeroing that is a little bit more tricky. The goal is that we're getting it close and as you gain experience and get better at shooting and you can press the trigger without disturbing your sight picture, that will allow you to get a more refined zero in the future. Early on when I got my first optic back in 2014, I chased my groups way too long. I would prone out, I would get bags, I would go to 25 and I was really frustrated that my group could never like be nice and tight with the target and that was more me than my position and what I was doing. It was me just not being able to press the trigger very well. So again, our goal is that we are close-ish, especially with our windage. We don't wanna be way off to the left or way off to the right, so that we can start training 15 yards and in, and with time, we'll have a more refined zero. I'm using the same target that I was using with the rifle, just because it does give me some very defined boxes. 
You can also measure out your clicks and your adjustments. Your various optics will tell you like, you know, in this case, one click is one entire MOA. So one click with this optic is one inch at 100 yards. So that's good to know. I won't have to click it as much as say the EOTech that I was shooting, but I'm also gonna be shooting at 10 yards so I can try to do the math in my head and that's still gonna be a good amount of clicks. So I'm just gonna start by shooting this small box at 10 yards. I'm gonna use the larger one to confirm a little bit further. And we're just gonna get our shots lined up with it and just go from there. As a quick refresher, as we're doing this, we wanna make sure we are gripping high and tight onto the pistol, sucked up into the beaver tail here. My left hand is going to come in here and grab as high as possible. These fingers are gripping very tight into my dominant hand, whether it's my right or my left. And when we go to press the trigger, we wanna ensure that we are taking up as much slack as possible to remove some extra variables that can affect movement in the sight right before we fire and we are trying to press, making an attempt to press the trigger without disturbing the sights. Now this can be practiced a lot in dry fire. We'll get to that in a future episode, but we're gonna do as best as we can right now, getting our pistol zeroed. So again, observing the four firearm safety rules. Gun is empty, I can see it's empty. Magazine, load, gun is chambered. I can press check if I need to. I'm good to go. Press to the wall. So aiming for here, I'm at about 10 yards. This is my group. These felt nice. This one was <laughs> not great. So uh, I need to come down a bunch. I need to go to the right a bunch as well because I don't feel like that was me twisting the gun off to the left. I do feel like that's pretty representative. So I'm gonna click right. And again, this is where I gotta do, you could do some math if you want or you just start clicking. One click is one M away. It's an inch at 100 but I'm at 10, so I need to do 10 clicks. Technically, each of these box represents 0.5. So that means five clicks per box. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 50, if that sounds right. We're gonna go 20 for now, because I don't wanna go too wild. And then down, I'm not gonna disregard him. Down, like 20. Well, let's go shoot another one. All right. So my down 20 is pretty good. So I'm gonna come down like, eh, six as I'm referencing this being 20 so a little bit more is probably less we'll do five right we got to go quite a bit um, these I felt these a little bit so they're probably more like this I'm gonna go right six so my latest group is two in the box and one outside now I'm pretty happy with that because I felt like this one was me shanking the sucker. But as far as my elevation goes, it's pretty close. As far as my windage goes, it's also pretty close. If I go to shoot into little dot targets or this entire USPSA target, I'll be good and I'll be just fine. What I like to do when I zero a handgun, and I've got some experience, so this may not apply to everyone right away, I will get it very close, and then as I shoot drills, I'll look for trends, and I will adjust my zero as I go. And that might be something you need to do. You know, on a day you shoot this really good, and then on another day you're like, man, everything's consistently off to the right, I don't think it's me, I'm pressing the trigger properly, it might actually be your zero. But a lot of people, they put a lot of stock into their pistol zero, and they really wanna get it refined, and to some extent it doesn't matter, because they suck and they're not pressing the trigger consistently to begin with. So we wanna be close so that we can begin training and as you become a better shooter, you will be able to have a much better zero. But now I'm gonna strip this target away. I'm just gonna to go to 20 and shoot a group so you guys can kinda of see what it looks like. Having a not perfect zero, but you could still get some decent performance. And I just zeroed this uh, RMR close enough with 10 rounds. So that's not too much money. Using a target like this to kinda of help me get in there so it doesn't cost a lot to zero, but now I'm gonna shoot a little bit further. 
see what happens. All right, so I just went back to 20-ish yards or so and shot a eh, fifth size-ish group and it's definitely trending off to the left. And it's trending off to the left so consistently, I don't think that's my trigger press. Having a couple off to the side that's you know left and then some are center is usually more indicative or more consistent. When you're doing something cons that consistent to one side, it's usually your zero. Having one or two flyers because you shanked the trigger and did something weird, like that's pretty normal. But this is consistent enough that I need to add a few clicks to the right. So at 10 meters, and this is where I don't always just go off of the data on here because it's not always perfectly accurate. At 10, I was clicking six to move it some. I just doubled the distance. I'm gonna go three to the right, so a little bit less, because it'll be less as I get further away. And I was holding here. I could come down one. Mark these up. I don't want to get real fancy. I write a one next to them so I can track my groups. And we'll do it again. Yeah, that was my grip being worse. So, I've got three, four that moved over into the right. This was me shanking the living crap out of it. And this one was something very similar. I could stand to click one more to the right, going off of these four good presses. I'm gonna go down one more and I should be good. This is going to allow me to shoot USPSA targets at 20 meters. When I go to shoot stuff up close, it'll be fine. If I go to shoot the letter, the, the, the credit card box in the head, like I will be good to go. This is a, a good enough zero to start training and start doing things. And it's probably much more accurate than I am shooting a handgun. So pretty solid, did that with not a whole lot of ammo. So now I'm ready for this guy to get to work. So I know zeroing is not the most fun thing that you probably wanna be doing when you've bought your first rifle or your first handgun. But it is gonna make a huge difference in how you train and how you understand what your rifle and pistol are capable of. I made the mistake early on when I was getting into shooting where I would just go and I would do a super rough zero and then I just wanted to train and shoot. And if you're inside of like 10 yards, you can get away with that. You don't really even need a zeroed gun if you're shooting inside of 10 yards. But if you wanna start doing stuff with a little bit more precision, a little bit more marksmanship, and you're going out to 25 and you're shooting little circles and you're doing some different things, you really are going to need a zero that you're very confident with and that you also fully understand. And at the end of the day, technically you can zero at any distance that you want. You could be at 30 yards and shoot into a small circle and go, cool, I know at 30, I can aim at this thing and the bullet's gonna go right there. But do you know what's gonna happen at 90? Do you know what's gonna happen at 150? Do you know what's gonna happen at 300? And that's why there are these pre-prescribed sort of zeros that people have done research and studies and tests on for you know, 50, 200 and 36, 300 and you know, 100 meters and what that's gonna do. And people kind of stick and standardize and stick to those because they can predict a little bit more accurately what's going to happen compared to some of the weird stuff out there that you can do. Now, if you don't have a 25 meter indoor bay or a bay that you can rent or you just don't have that kind of distance to shoot and maybe you're stuck with 20, you can still get a decent zero with your rifle. Some of the clicks aren't gonna necessarily line up. You're not necessarily gonna be able to do the math of the one inch MOA measurement, you know, based on this EOTech being a 0.5 every time you click it. And you may just have to do sort of random clicks to just move your point of impact around on the paper to finally get where you want it to be. And that's okay too. There's a lot of different ways you can go about getting a zero. You don't have to do it exactly the way I did it, but ultimately you need to know what your rifle and handgun can do. It's also important to understand that when you swap ammos, especially with a rifle, uh, you will see some difference in your a zero. If you go from shooting 55 grain and you go to shoot some match grade 77, it is going to be different. If you add a suppressor to your rifle, that is also going to change things sometimes quite dramatically. Uh, for the better, uh, suppressors can actually make your rifle more accurate, but they are going to change things. They're going to droop the barrel a little bit. It's probably going to shoot low. It might shoot off to the side a little bit and you just have to make adjustments for that. With a handgun, if you're swapping between 115 grain ammo to 147, you're not gonna see as much difference, especially because you're at close range, but it can also be a little bit of a difference as well. So if you have started shooting and for one day you go, man, I just feel like everything's really off, check your ammo and see if you changed ammo for some reason. See if you daisy chained different ammos into your magazine and that could throw you off as well. Try to stay consistent. 
With all that said, guys, that's the zeroing portion. The next episode, we're actually going to be talking about the first drills that you should be shooting on the range after you've done some weapons handling in your house, like we talked about in episode one, after you've zeroed your rifle and your handgun, that's this episode right here, and actually what you should be focusing on with the first hundred or so rounds of ammunition that you go out and buy once you come out to the range. Because we were able to zero these rifles for like 24 rounds for this guy, you know, around 20 rounds for the pistol. So we probably have some ammo left over that we can spend on our first range day, and that's what we're gonna be talking about next. Until then, thanks so much for watching.